Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Lau, the Senior Content Specialist of Blendtec Asia. On behalf of Blendtec Asia, I would like to extend a very warm welcome and thank you to our speaker and attendees for joining us today. Also, a happy International Women's Day to all. Uh, just a reminder, this is a recorded session and we will, of course, be making this session available on our website after this lunch talk. Now, uh, jumping right in to our Women in Learning series, we know that the pandemic has permanently changed the way we live our lives. But did you know that because of the pandemic, it will now take us 135.6 years instead of 99.5 years to close the global gender gap? Now, this gender gap will have a scarring effect on women's access to learning and skill building opportunities, which is why LearnTech Asia created the Women in Learning Trailblazers for a Better, Better World series. Our focus for this series is threefold. The first being establishing easy access to learning for women in Asia. Secondly, empowering women in Asia to pursue their lifelong learning journey. And thirdly, encouraging women in Asia to be their own leaders. Part of our Women in Learning series aims to highlight industries and experts that empower women to pursue their lifelong learning journey and establish easier access to learning for women, which is why LearnTech Asia is celebrating International Women's Day by highlighting the edtech industry, an industry that continuously paves the way for women to scale up. This afternoon, we have Maria Spice, co-founder and co-CEO of Holon IQ. Now, Holon IQ, for those of you who don't know, is the world's leading platform for social impact intelligence. Prior to Holon IQ, Maria led digital learning futures for a global education company, envisioning new futures for education through investment and research projects about the future of learning, such as global ad tech landscape and higher education digital transformation. She has also worked in public and private higher education for over 20 years in the APAC region, specializing in the transforming education through technology area. Welcome, Maria. Thank you so much. And it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I look of forward course. to it. Yes, definitely. All right, so we will be just before we get started, I just want to prompt our attendees that you are more than welcome to use the chat function in this Zoom. So, you know, if you just play around with the mouse on your screen, you will see that there is a chat function and you can go ahead and pop your questions as and when uh, for Maria. And we will actually have a Q&A session right at the end of this lunch talk uh, where we will address as many questions as possible. Uh, so yeah, what are we, what are we waiting for? Uh, let's get started. Um, Maria, maybe for those of those who are here and those who will listen to this recorded session later, uh, maybe for them who are not familiar with who you are, maybe you could go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. Um, Maria Spees, I'm, as, as said, the co-founder co and co-CEO of Holland IQ. Um, that's only a small part of my journey, though. Um, I started out, I've been working in ed tech, essentially, for 25 years, even before it was called ed tech, even when there was not a tech component to ed tech, really. Um, and so I've been involved in higher education specifically, and working with institutions and businesses to help build more scalable um, learning and education products and often technology was involved in that, and uh, learning design, and also running the businesses of delivering education. So always been on the sort of cusp of education and business and technology, those sort of three areas, which you know now, of course, is encapsulated in, in the term ed tech. Uh, I have a very varied background. I didn't um, start out in education. I started out I did a visual art degree. I started out as an artist. I did also, I had my own business when I was, I don't know, 20 or something. I mean, if you could call it a business because I was an artist, so there was not much money being made there, but I learned a lot of things. Um, and I learned to be self, self-dependent self essentially. Um, and then, you know, moved into education as you do. I don't know that anyone these days plans their career uh, and executes on that plan. It's a little less uh, structured than that usually and that's okay um, yeah. and essentially that's my 
my background. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that brief background. I, I think what you say is so true. Uh, some people might actually have a plan for their career, but whether we really follow that plan is a whole different ball game as well. Um, yeah. You mentioned that you started out as an artist. You know, maybe you could share a little bit more about what kind of like led you into the ad tech industry. How did you go from being an artist to jumping in, <laughs> jumping into the ad tech world? That's a great question. I guess just it was serendipity essentially. Um, I I um, I took some of the skills I was I was using as an artist to, and I could see that what those skills were, and I applied them to a job that I had. I had gone for a part time job because I had to you know make a living and I could see that those skills crossed over and then that led me into another area and another area and so it, it sort of just snowballed like that but there's there is there are always massive overlaps between the, mm -hmm. the sorts of skills and capabilities you're building in field A will definitely be uh, you know relevant for field B and so I think opening one's mind to that is mm -hmm. very important. Otherwise, you can just sort of stay in the one track and miss opportunities. Yeah. I, okay. You mentioned skills a couple of times there. And I wonder what are maybe three skills that you learned along the way, even as you pivot from being an artist into the ad tech industry. And how did you leverage those skills to move up the career ladder? Yeah. I think one of the things that stayed with me the whole time and which I, whenever I, uh, you know, people ask me this question, learn to present your ideas mm -hmm. and present your perspectives in front of an audience, small or large. You have to get over that fear of not public speaking. I mean, it is public speaking, but, but really take that challenge straight up and learn to present your ideas in a succinct way, your perspectives and ideas, not just mm -hmm. ideas, but perspectives, your arguments, um, you know, to people who are listening to you, either in a big crowd or a small crowd, your peers, your bosses, learn to do that. It's very hard and nerve wracking, mm -hmm. but you absolutely have to get over that hump. That is the, definitely the thing. Mm -hmm. And when I was an artist, I was trying to sell my stuff, you know, into shops and things. I had to be very succinct and quick mm -hmm. and, to the point. <laughs> um, and, and so that it's sort of right from the very beginning, the most nerve wracking thing, but you absolutely have to do it. So practice that one. Um, I think the other thing is a skill that I learned um, that took a while mm -hmm. was being, um, learning to be sort of upfront, calling things out, asking, um, being clear in questions and not being shy about asking questions or participating in the conversation it's actually very easy to just sit back and listen and take things yeah. in and you learn a lot but you don't participate um and and you can be active because it's in your mind but actually mm -hmm. nobody sees that they don't see all the amazing ideas that are going mm -hmm. on your head it has to come out your mouth and so be participate be upfront. Mm -hmm. um you know ask the question in the crowd at a Q&A session in a conference be that person to stand up with the microphone and ask a question you know so learning to do that over and over yeah um I think the third thing is it, uh, I would say keep going keep walking keep moving forward it's persisting being mm -hmm. persistent um not giving up having a work ethic yeah. even through tough times just keep moving forward mm -hmm. and and you know cycles change things get yeah. better things get worse they get better again and so you just need to keep going great i like that so okay i wrote that down to remember <laughs> properly so the first one is to learn to present yourself your ideas your perspectives and i think that really ties in very well with being upfront not being afraid to um you know take kind of like take the mic or even kind of like voicing out even in zoom especially because like when we're in zoom uh, now we live in this zoom well it's so easy to hide behind like, the no video or like the muted microphones and things like that and the last one is to always keep moving forward i think those are three very good you know obviously skills that um they, they i guess they don't really cover they don't fall under technical or hard skills but they are really power skills that really push you forward i guess 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what are some of the challenges you encountered along the way? You know, especially as a woman, while you were, you know, kind of like moving up the career ladder or transitioning, you know, between your roles and things like that. What were some challenges that you faced? Um, I think one of the early on, especially, um, one of the things I didn't appreciate which I really, I can see now, it's, it's like it was invisible before and now it's right before my eyes all the time, is a sort of a, an, um, uh, the challenge of a pervasive assumed deference. And what I mean by that is um, culturally, mm -hmm. there's when you walk into a room or you sit around a table, you're in a business meeting or you're, you know, whatever, whatever context, work context, um, there's so, there sort of is an assumed deference. Watch it. Watch out for this. Like, do a little test yourself when you're in the you know in a meeting next time. Uh, who speaks first? Who takes the microphone? Who mm -hmm. who leads the discussion? And and there's sort of a an assumption that 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 as a woman um, or women don't do that much. And so you have to sort of break through that invis invisible stereotype mm -hmm. in a way go in feel, feeling and assuming feeling equal and assuming equality and sometimes that takes a lot of courage because you're sitting in a room a boardroom I mean I, when I was you know I, I ran an MBA program when I was in my mid-20s and I'd go mm -hmm. into the academic board and it'd be all men <laughs> which is fine yeah. and they'd all be 50 plus and I'm a 25 <laughs> year old woman trying to argue the point on something it's very intimidating mm -hmm. Um, and so um, I learned in that in that environment. Yeah. I mean, that environment is a university environment is often um, very um, sort of structured in terms of of, of um, protocols, mm -hmm. and that's great because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't allow uh, uh, certain cultures to uh, sort of unfold because there are rules about what you can yeah. say when you can say it how you treat people all that stuff mm -hmm. and so that that was a really good learning curve for me but um go in feeling equal assuming equality um and and but you know watch out for these things one of the i'm going to put uh in the channel i'll put a a link to a, a resource that is incredibly fantastic for for reading it's called um the power of talk who mm -hmm. gets heard and why and it's by a link a linguist nice the HBR article, it's absolutely fascinating. You've got to read it because once you read this, then the next time you go into any of these situations, you'll see things in a different light. It's amazing. Okay. So I'll put it in the channel. Um, I think the second challenge is being the other. It's intimidating to be the other, the only, <laughs> the only, you know, the sheer <laughs> weight of men all around. Yeah. And, and you know, as you're, as you're working your way through, um, that 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 is a challenge, mm -hmm. um, and I think the third the third one is um, the challenge of actually realizing and doing what it takes to if you if you if you want to be a CEO and you want to yeah. be you know in those big positions you have to um, you have to deal with what comes with it mm -hmm. and those things aren't often nice right very hard decisions, yeah. tough decisions, um, you know, high stakes things, which mm -hmm. you then pin your reputation on or pin your, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not saying women can't do it, we, women can, but one of the challenges is getting to the point of going, oh, okay, it's actually, shall I take this hard road or the easy road, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it's risk and reward, but yeah. those are challenges as you move along. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And you have to have confidence in yourself and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. Um, but they're the, the three sort of challenges that I would I would say. Yeah, and I like how you just ended with, you know, we, we need to be confident in ourselves because that is kind of like a, uh, a, a running team throughout all our, you know, our either our coffee sessions or our stories, you know, through this Women in Learning series. Yeah. A lot of the women uh, or the experts themselves, they, they always emphasize being confident um, being part of that kind of skill that you actually have to learn, you know, to kind of leverage yourself and push yourself forward. I think, I don't know whether this question I should already ask because you've mentioned it a couple of times, you know, uh, how valuable is learning in bridging that gender gap, you know, in general or even just in the ad tech industry? Yeah, if you could expand a bit more from there. 
Yeah, uh, look, it's absolutely essential. You know, I mean, I'm in education. I've been in education for 20, 25 years. I can, I see firsthand what it, what it does to people, for people. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, you know, um, you see, you see a um, knowledge, you learn in many different ways throughout your life from a baby onwards in, in yeah. very informal settings, in very formal settings and everything in between that whole spectrum. And so that's all learning. Yeah. And so formal education provides um, the foundation blocks mm-hmm. for things that sometimes you already knew, but you mm-hmm. just didn't have a name for it. You didn't have a term for it. The terminology is very important. It's a language in itself. If you're learning about technology or you're learning about mm-hmm. business or you're learning about finance, all of these different disciplines have their own knowledge and, and, and language and in order to be part of that domain, you need mm-hmm. to know the lingo mm-hmm. to be taken seriously because, yeah. you know, it, it, it's a language and yeah. the terminology is important. And so it gives you, education gives you those foundations that, for structuring the knowledge that you already have into a domain um, to, to sort of kick springboard mm-hmm. from. Knowing your stuff knowing your content deeply, knowing that it's like, I've, I've studied this, I, I know this, I've experienced it and I've studied it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing more, there's nothing better than that for confidence. Yep, um, so, you know, it's very important. Yeah, okay. That, I mean, that's, uh, that's good to hear as well, you know. So, so knowing the terminology, whether it's through informal learning or even formal learning, I think all of us would probably have gone through um, within the spectrum itself, we have we've um, experienced informal and formal learning, and of course, knowing your stuff because that, you know, that kind of like makes you more confident, as you mentioned. Now, according yeah. to Holland IQ's report, I think one of the reports that was you know put out by Holland IQ, women make up thirteen percent, one three percent of the top eight hundred ed tech companies. Um, what are your thoughts on this? You know, and what does the future of ed tech look for women then with you know if women only make up 13 percent of that yeah i think it's um well 13 percent is about average for startups globally mm-hmm. um so i think it's all startups globally no matter where, what area not just ed tech but any area is about 14 percent. so 13 percent mm-hmm. is 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 about average um it's it's better than fintech which is five percent mm-hmm. and the fortune 500 ceos are eight percent which is still very bad but of course it's nothing where it should be because it should be at 50 percent right mm-hmm. it should be you know equivalent to what's happening in in terms of the overall gender balance in the world yeah um and so what does it take what are the barriers why mm-hmm. um, um that's a very very complex uh, question to answer but it doesn't start the three years before someone came as CEO it starts when when mm. girls are very very young yeah early early education early support at home mm. particularly um, and you know the future of ed tech looks I think really brilliant for women and the reason I say this is because um, women there are something like 40% um, mm-hmm. of leaders uh, in universities are women okay. um, of the professoriate. So mm-hmm. senior academic leaders, um, 79% of public school teachers in the world are women. Um, 54% of um, school principals are women. These are decision makers for education. Yes. Yeah. They're decision makers for ed tech. Mm-hmm. And so there are some barriers already um, gone. Being broken down, yeah. Yes, that's right. Because you have, uh, you know, it's a, it, education is a, an area where there are a lot of women. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not to say that there's 50% women all, all in decision-making areas, but you know, <laughs> better than, better than other, other areas. So I think um, the future of ed tech looks fantastic for women. Um, I, I think that ed tech... Is a combination. Often we see in ed tech mm-hmm. co-founders that are one's technical and one's education. Often yeah. that yeah. combination is you know creates the the startup. Um, and so you know learning the other. If you're in the coming from the education side, learn the other. Take mm-hmm. the opportunity to learn what your co what your head of um, 
development or mm-hmm. CTO or whatever, who, yeah. what they're doing, how it works. Don't don't be say, okay, that's not me. That's good. I've got that. They've got that covered. Mm-hmm. I've got, I've got, mm-hmm. Really learn more about that. Um, and yeah. that's that's that continuous learning. Um, and I think um, I think there's you know lots of lots of opportunity globally for women. There's lots of also um, initiatives and support mm-hmm. and networks yeah. um, for um, women to to be either mentored or to get ideas or to uh, build their network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that's. Uh, it's, it's good to hear that there are actually a lot more women in education, but whether, and, and to hear also that education, even at the early levels, they all built into the ad tech industry at the end of the day. And it's enlightening to also know that the future of ad tech looks good for women. So don't be yeah. discouraged, always go about with it. And uh, this one is a good reminder for myself where it don't limit yourself to what you already know, expand yeah. and learn what else, you know, the other part of the, the, of the industry or the other part of the business that you're unfamiliar with, just because you already have an expert of, you know, like a co-expert with you, doesn't mean that you need to overlook it, encourage that kind of continuous or lifelong learning pursuit. You know, you are a co-founder and a co-CEO. Um, what are some of the steps that you have taken, you know, as part of Holland IQ or just yourself as an individual, what are some steps you have taken to encourage more female participation? I mean, in our um, in our own company, I checked mm-hmm. today. We have exactly <laughs> we have exactly a 50-50 ratio of male female staff. Now I don't know whether that's a coincidence. I mean, I knew it was really <laughs> close, but it was exactly half and half. Um, <laughs> Which I thought that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things is one of the, one of the things you know. Um, I think actually this whole thing is built on equity. Is is built on a million tiny steps every day, mm-hmm. not one or two grand gestures that come and go, really. Right. And so it's it's an everyday embedding that into the way we work modeling mm-hmm. i mean i'm i'm the co ceo we are you know equal partners cool. and that's the yeah. modeling we have in our business um but i do we do uh very when we're making decisions very aware um so for example um when we're building staff you know uh, mm-hmm. we do think about gender and when yeah. we're delivering um you know, when we're doing events and we would, you know, doing a panel or something, mm-hmm. we we have, we just have an expectation about gender equity, mm-hmm. even if it's harder and it is harder sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we, we have that built in. And so it's sort of like daily, daily things. And I'm very aware because I've been through that process. I, mm-hmm. I can see people around the table who've got ideas and are not saying something. I call mm-hmm. them out and, and say, hey, you know, Mary, I looks like you were going to say something. Have you got any ideas about this? So encouraging that, giving them space. Because yeah. sometimes when everyone's shooting in a on a in a in a meeting, there's like someone's like trying to say something and they're a little bit, <laughs> yeah. You've got to sort of pull them out a little and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. support that. So daily, daily incremental basis, really. Yeah. That, yeah, it's good to hear that, you know, it's more of like a daily like you say gradual or daily steps that you know rather than like a a big gesture once a year or like you know once every quarter and things like that and I like the idea of like pulling people out go like hey I know you wanted to say something (laughs) um what are some of uh the qualities you know just based off your observation and your experience uh what qualities do women leaders have that maybe men leaders don't have that we can emulate Uh, yeah yeah, that's a that's a really (laughs) Um, really hard question because <laughs> it, it, it's it's a broad it's a broad generalization. Uh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And so, but you know, sort of overall, I would say, um, without wanting to stereotype, but overall, I think women women leaders particularly are um, are a little a little more um, a little more when they build to a solution Mm -hmm. a little more um willing to build building blocks with lots of other people rather than Mm. 
than be the, the 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 person sort of charging out the front and yes getting ideas from people but still being mm. charging out the front mm. Um, mm. i think okay. sometimes that's misinterpreted yeah agree as indecision or lack of conviction about something or but it's not it's just mm-hmm. a different a different style different style, now is yeah. it better is it worse you know what i think it depends on the context mm-hmm. because sometimes you absolutely need to say okay you know what everyone this is the way we're going i know yeah. I know that that's not popular with everyone, but we have to go this way. Here are mm-hmm. the reasons. Come with me. Yeah. Sometimes that's the best way. <laughs> yeah, but that's right. You, know, you, you have to sort of modify depending um, on, on that. And I think women uh, leaders are much more, I think, you know, bigger antennas, mm. emotional antennas. Emotional antennas, yeah. 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 So okay. being able to look, observe and watch, mm. watch people, either physically or virtually, yeah. and and read certain um read emotional intelligence reading i guess um Mm -hmm. in order to read a room and things like that and so i think women are a little better at that than men well it's a social yeah it's uh, yeah i yeah no worries i yeah when when we crafted the question with you that it will be a bit of like a broad uh statement or a broad question so it's okay um i just just a little heads up for anybody if you have any questions please go ahead and shoot it in the chat if not i'm uh i'm probably just going to ask a few more questions before we do have to wrap up so please don't uh, be unafraid, be confident, and you know, go ahead and just ask. <laughs> oh, Maria might actually, might, we might just pull up people. <laughs> I've also, I, I just put the, um, I just put that oh, HBR yeah. article into the mm-hmm. chat. I really recommend that you read it. It's fascinating reading. Thank you. Thank um, you for sharing I, that sauce. Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, to answer any specific questions. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so if nobody has any questions yet, I've got a couple more. Uh, maybe just for, you know, this is obviously for everybody here, but what are some skills and knowledge that you can share with all of us here in the room, you know, and also and for everyone who will be listening to the recording on how we can improve our abilities or our skills uh, so that we can move up the career ladder um, that much better or that much, yeah, that much better. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I thought about this long and hard. I, 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 I do go back to those foundational skills mm-hmm. um, rather than technical skills because you can learn technical skills easily. Um, but it's the, the interpersonal and, and, you know, strategic skills. So one of the things you need to learn to do in order mm-hmm. to move forward or yeah. out of the situation you're in, sometimes you can get into a rut and you're sort of going around in a circle. <laughs> and so one of the things... That your skill that you need to learn is learning to say no. <laughs> learning to say no. Because if you're great at your job and you're doing a great job, people are like, oh, awesome. Because the busy people get all the work and that keeps mm. loading on them and on them and on them. And they're doing a great job. But actually, is it great for you? Is it taking you forward? Is it is it more of the same thing that you're great at? Or is it helping you to build new things which are actually harder they're hard mm-hmm. learning something really learning something new is actually difficult and that should be mm-hmm. slightly difficult otherwise you're not learning right um, but that means it's a bit more you know troublesome but learn to say no to things when it's not going to um, lead you in mm-hmm. in the direction now that's not to say no to everything because that's like super yeah. selfish like no it's only about me you know I mean I'm saying that but but don't be overwhelmed. Otherwise, you're not in control of, of your mm-hmm. part. Somebody mm-hmm. else or other people are controlling you by giving you all this other stuff. So yeah. or, you know, taking your time. Anyway, so learning to say no is, is, I think, a really important skill. It's hard to do. I find it hard to do too. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the, the thing that I've learned, which has been hard for me over the last, probably specifically over the last maybe five or six years Mm -hmm. is, and this is particularly important in any sort of startup, not just ed tech, but any sort of startup, is to learn how and when to recognise to do just enough, not not too much. Mm -hmm. You don't need a gold-plated something if a tin one will do the job. Yeah. Now that goes against a lot of my inside sort of everything that I've been 
taught when I was a kid and everything's like, if you're going to do a good, do, good job, you better do it well. You don't, don't do a half job. Da, 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 all that yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I've learned to really pick and choose how much perfection I'm going to get to mm. because it's an 80-20 rule. 80, if 80% is good enough, then you can spend 20% doing something else because that 20% extra is not going to get you any further. Mm. So recognising yeah. where that tipping point is um, is actually quite difficult and yeah. you feel like you're making compromises and so on like that. But um, doing what's needed um, in order to get, and this is part of a sort of startup iterative process mm -hmm. of, Knowing that the thing that you've just said, I'm, a, I'm not going to do any more on this, that's it, I'm finished. Yeah. Uh, you're knowing that that in, in, in startup land, I guess you're in ed tech and other tech, you're, yeah. you're continually iterating. So don't, don't build something to perfection hmm. because perfection never, you never get there before <laughs> you launch it. Um, yeah. You just get it out there and, and then see what happens, get feedback, go again, see what happens and so on. And that's actually a different way of, of working than I have been used to. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. That, that's really interesting because I never, I never thought of it that way before. So while you're, while you're sharing this, I'm actually thinking like, what is that 80% versus that 20, that 20%? That's, I, that I'm definitely kind of thinking, I don't know about the rest of the crowd, but it's definitely got me thinking. And it, 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 you are right. It is a lesson that we learn from young where you're supposed to give you 100%. You're supposed to, to go above and beyond to get something done. But if 80% is enough to kind of like set the pace at the moment, then that 20% can go on to do something else. You can use that energy to do something else. And, you know, kind of like putting it at 80% and then having, getting feedback, you know, and then doing it again and not, not doing it again, but improving based on that feedback. That's, that's a really good one to, I, I'm definitely going to have to keep thinking about that, like on my end, what is that 80%, 20%? I, okay, I know that you don't have much time, uh, we don't have much time left. Um, so just a heads up for everybody, uh, if you happen to have any questions later on, feel free to email us uh, because what we will do then is we will maybe share it with Maria and then we can get Maria to actually answer them separately uh, and we will upload them to our website, obviously, for, for open access to everybody. But one last question, Maria, you know, we are talking about women in learning and celebrating women in ad tech as well. Uh, what are some, are, are you learning any new skill at the moment? If if not, um, do you have any skills you would like to learn in the near future? Um, or if you're already learning, what are they? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I'm always learning. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, you know, never ending, of course. And it, I think you have to be mindful that you are actually learning and try mm -hmm. to build some structure into that or reflection on that. I'm actually currently, um, in addition to... Um, running the business I'm actually I'm also in the final stages of my doctorate and oh. so I'm learning a lot um yeah. through that process <laughs> I'm learning a lot about myself as well in terms of my thresholds yeah. um, but, you know I I am um I'm I'm learning about um how to and this is continual. This is not, you don't learn it and say, oh, I'm done. Okay, good, mm -hmm. move on to the next thing. This is a sort of continual. But learning to, um, and this happens in my business as well, learning to ways of coming to terms with not being able to see a whole picture all at once because mm -hmm. things are too big and too complex. I like to see big pictures. I like to have a view of things and see how they interact with each other, whether it be global trends in education or whether it be, you know, the, the, the content of my, my data analysis. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's just not possible. It's mm -hmm. too big, too complex. And so I'm now learning about ways to um, structure information in, in more segmented ways mm -hmm. that then I can connect together. Um, and so that's, I know that's quite obscure sort of, <laughs> skill, um, but it, uh, you know, I, I'm continuing to learn. I mean, obviously the topic and the, um, you know, being, being able to, over the last few years, particularly being able to um, uh, just in my, in my mind say, I've got 
an hour and a half and I'm going to mm-hmm. do this in one and a half hours mm. and that it's going to happen right because otherwise things stretch out for a long time and you need <laughs> a lot of procrastination and so on like that but actually that's that that discipline is mm-hmm. has been amazing uh, anyone mm-hmm. can do it but it's yeah. not easy <laughs> no I think you're right there because the dis- discipline is a skill discipline and time management we, we I think we heard in our previous coffee talk uh discipline and time management are two skills that you are just continuously learning over and over again ev- with everything that you do because obviously we go through different uh different phases of our life like once you're done with your doctorate you're going to have something else and like with the whole like discipline and time management there um so yeah okay do you have any like closing uh words or like final final words you know for our crowd who's who's here oh oh i have oh sorry sorry mari i just happened to see a comment it says you know from ben lapa um i'm not too sure whether i pronounced your name correctly uh, but lapa says you're an amazing woman and sp- inspiring others in what you do thank you i think that <laughs> i i i don't need, i don't need to have a closing line i think that was wonderful but mari <laughs> do you have do you have any final words for for the crowd well look only to say you know the fact that you're here and thinking about um you know looking at looking to other models for you mm. for you to support your own journey is 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 wonderful yeah. um you know everyone everyone's taking their own path but be yeah. confident in that path and mm. you know nobody controls your destiny other than you and so i would say be confident in your path just speak out and get out mm. there and keep moving keep going forward um doing things you love to do whatever that mm. is um don't get cornered to doing things that you don't like to do <laughs> life's too short right so <laughs> yeah no okay thank you i think i've learned so much and i hope everybody has definitely learned I, a couple of things i think i will definitely take home is learning to present yourself and your perspectives yeah. you know uh being upfront knowing when to voice out and being unafraid or being confident to do all of that and always moving forward uh be willing to always learn new skills a good reminder for me was just you know just because i'm good at this doesn't mean i should actually not explore something else that somebody might already be an expert in that's a very good reminder there um and also just the power of learning to say no but not at the expense of being selfish um and also discipline there right that last one there as well so thank you so much maria for just availing yourself this afternoon you know for our uh, lunch talk um and also all the best with your doctorate uh, we, <laughs> we you. hope we, we know that it's a very tough process so thank you so much Um, and thank you to everybody for participating with us. And for those of you who will be listening later on in this recorded session, uh, thank you for you know watching this entire session through. So thank you everybody. Thank you Maria, and happy International Women's Day to everyone again. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yes, of course. Thanks. Bye. Hi. Thank you.